Now that you have customers in your business, what next? Should we go out there and get more customers? Well, before we answer that question, let's define what lifetime value of a customer is. Stay tuned. So by the end of this video, my goal is to help you understand what lifetime value of a customer means and how you can use that and implement that in your own business so you can start to make more money and more revenue with your business. Let's get into it. So to help you understand what lifetime value of a customer is, I'm going to break down this video into four main questions. These four main questions will help you understand much better. So our first main question is, what is lifetime value of a customer? Basically what lifetime value of a customer means is for any given time period, how much money how much revenue does a single customer on average generate for your business? So for example, say on day one, they buy something for $10. On day one, their lifetime value is $10. Now let's just say they come back 10 days later and buy another $10 product from you. Now over 10 days, their lifetime value is now $20. Now you do this for all your customers and you start to create averages. On average, on the 10th day of doing business with your company, how much money does an average customer spend with you? Now it's up to you to decide which given time periods are you going to measure. However, it's very highly recommended that you measure across many time periods so you get a better sense of how much revenue you can drive over time with your customer base. My own personal preference for an online business is every week. So one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, and on and on and on. I want to see how much revenue can my business drive for each customer on average for one week, two week, three week after the initial purchase. Now, if it's an offline business, then I like to do it every 30 days. So 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days. And you know, it's kind of harder to measure lifetime value with an offline business. However, there are some ways and having those evenly spaced out a little bit longer times helps to measure lifetime value a bit more accurately. Now, those are just my personal preferences. Make sure you adapt those to your business. If you are a very fast business, then you want to scrunch up the time as much as you can. If you're a business that operates on very long sales cycles, then you might want to elongate the lifetime value measurements. So the next big question is why should you even care about lifetime value of a customer in your business well let's just say that after 30 days an average customer spends $30 with your business it costs you $5 to acquire that customer you know that after 30 days you are six times more profitable by knowing this information you can start to double down on your marketing efforts and go really aggressive with it because if you know that it costs $5 to acquire a customer through paid advertising and that over 30 days they will spend $30 30 more dollars with you? Well, you know that you're profitable and you'll start to double down on your marketing efforts and put more money into paid advertising. It's like there's a lottery machine out there that gives you $2 every time you put a dollar in, guaranteed every single time. A lot of people will play that and a lot of people will play it really fast too. Another reason to care about lifetime value of a customer is because by focusing on increasing the lifetime value of each and every customer, you are indirectly focusing on providing more value to that customer. And so by by focusing on delivering more value to each and every customer, you will start to reduce churn. Churn is a marketing term that basically means over a given time period, how many customers did you lose? And churn is usually given in a percentage. So for example, let's just say that you started off with 10 customers on day one, and on day two, now you only have nine customers. You lost one out of 10. So you have a 10% churn rate. However, if you focused on increasing the lifetime value of each and every one of those customers, you might have a shot at keeping all 10 of them and having a 0% churn rate. And by decreasing churn, you're keeping more of your customers. Remember, it's always more expensive to go out to the market and acquire new customers than it is to just keep your old customers in place. So by focusing on lifetime value of a customer, not only are you keeping more customers, but each customer is becoming more valuable to your business because they're going to buy more of your products or your services. So the next big question is how can you measure lifetime value? How do you know how much much each customer spends on average after a given time period. If you have an online business, you can use the customer's IDs and cross-reference them with your purchase history and figure out over a time period how much do they buy. If you're not super tech savvy, it's okay. You can get a developer
developer that knows a bit of machine learning to help you out. Just so you know, I provide these developer and machine learning skills to businesses all around the world as well. So if you wanted to work with me, head on over to sunnychopper.com, hit the Let's Work tab, fill out the form, and it will give me a better idea of what you guys need and how I can provide it for you. And you can also look at previous work. However, if you're an offline business, you have to get a bit creative with how you can track these kind of things. For example, nowadays salons will check you in using a computer. This way they can track who's who, who's coming in, and how much did they pay on what date, and they can start to track over a time period how much does an average customer spend. Another great way that I've seen offline businesses tracking lifetime value is using punch cards to give away something for free. However, those punch cards gives data into how many times has the customer came back to that shop. For example, let's say that you run a mobile car detailing service. You can use punch cards to check to see how many times on average does a customer come back to your business. And you can say after the fifth detailing service, the sixth one will be for free. And that way it gives them an incentive to use the punch card and you can start to track how many times a punch card on average gets punched. Now that you know what lifetime value of a customer is, why you should care about it, and how you can measure it, now you might have the question, how can I increase the lifetime value of every customer? The first way is by listening. Listen to your customers and what feedback they have to give to you. Because if you can incorporate the positive feedback that they're giving to you, you can start to create new products and new services or even make your existing products even better so they keep returning and that way you can start to make more money on every single customer. You can collect this feedback by literally just talking to them or giving out surveys or engaging on social media or maybe even if you have an online business you can start to track their activity across the software. Bottom line is is that you start getting feedback both qualitative and quantitative to start increasing how much value you can provide to your existing products or services or through a new product or service. Another way you can start to increase the lifetime value of a customer is by providing solutions that are more urgent. So let's just say that I write a book about a certain problem. Now, the person reading it can learn about solving that problem. However, they don't have experience, they don't have the action taking skills to implement that strategy in their own business. Now, I can create a software that goes along with what the book was talking about and now they have an actionable tool to use and implement using the strategy that they learned in the book. Now, I can price the software much higher than the book was and start to increase the lifetime value by helping that customer making more better products that help them solve it much easier. And then furthermore, let's just say that the software helps them implement the strategy. However, they don't have the experience and the know-how to use that strategy and the software to fix their problem. And that's where I can sell them my own services to help them fix their problem for them. And I can price the service a bit higher than the software use. So as you can tell, in each one of those stages, the urgency of the problem is higher. A book means that it's kind of low urgency. You need to solve it, but it's not super important. With the software, it's mid tier importance buying the service from me would be high urgency you need to solve the problem right now and I want it done and I want it done fast and quick and I don't want to deal with it this way as you educate the customer their interest and their desire to solve the problem will also increase and by just being there and having a product to follow up with will help you to increase the lifetime value of a customer another way to increase the lifetime value of a customer is by selling them related products or services or otherwise known as cross sales and upsell for example let's just say that you have an e-commerce website around tennis now they come to your website and buy a tennis racket now they might also need tennis balls and tennis equipment and tennis shoes and you got to make sure you have all of that on your website because if you only had tennis rackets and nothing else well they might come for the tennis rackets but you could have sold them tennis balls you could have sold them tennis equipment you could have sold them tennis shoes you see where this is going with having related products and services you can then start to increase how much things you can sell to that customer and if your products and services are super high quality and they deliver on what you promised well you're gonna be increasing your brand equity a lot and finally this method of increasing the lifetime value of a customer is a bit risky. However, Amazon implemented this one. Basically, you price your products so low that the customer has to buy it unless they're out of their mind. And when the customer is exposed to your brand and your product that you're selling for super duper cheap, you over deliver on the service, not the product, but on the service that you provide with the product. This makes the customer extremely loyal to your brand. Think about it. Amazon for the longest time was 
in the red. They were losing a whole lot of money. They were pricing their products so cheap. However, they were over delivering on the service that they made two day free shipping. Now, if you think about it, where's the first place you go to shop online? Most of the time, it's amazon.com. You don't even go through Google anymore. You just go straight to amazon.com and you type in what it is that you want and you start browsing. Yes, they may have lost a lot of money to get you into the brand, to get you exposed to amazon.com, to get you exposed to two day free shipping, to get you exposed to all the extra services that they provide. However, over the long run, you're going to be so loyal to Amazon that even if they jacked up their prices for a few of their products, they're going to make their money back so fast because people are so loyal to that brand. So if you can have a product that is priced extremely cheaply and is wanted by a lot of people, make sure that you over deliver on the service so that you can start to build brand equity with your business and you create loyal customers who will shop from you time and time and time again and you can start to sell them on your expensive products and services. So in conclusion, by knowing how much it costs to acquire a customer and how much money they spend with you over a given time period, you can start to tell how profitable is your business over any given time period. So now back to the original question that I had at the beginning of this video. Now you have customers in your business. What should you do next? Now the answer should be pretty obvious. You need to start increasing the lifetime value of your customers. If you're still wondering what lifetime value of a customer is, you can hit me up on any of these social media links that are popping up right now. Hit me up. We can talk about it. I'll explain it even further. However, if this video helped you understand what lifetime value of a customer is and how you can start to use it in your business, why not drop that thumbs up? And also, here's the question of the day so it helps you solidify this concept. What new product or service do you think you can create to better help your customers solve their problems? I want to hear all your comments. Drop them down below. And as you know, on this channel, we like to work smarter and work harder than the competition because it's no longer just about working hard. That's so yesterday. Today's game is all about working hard and working smart with the power of technology and software. So if you're all about that life, why not hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you know exactly when content drops. And as always, this has been Sunny Chopper. Peace. Perfect. Perfect.